We're going to talk this morning about the two foundations here in Matthew 7, a story very familiar uh, to many of us. But I'll tell you, it's great that we teach our children this, but this is not just a lesson for children, not in the least. It's a lesson for all of us that we need to to hear and, and pay attention to very carefully. Does anyone recognize the picture on the screen? Yeah, it's the Grand Haven Lighthouse. And uh, during a, an intense storm recently, and I got to looking at that picture and thinking, I wonder how, how deep the foundation is of this lighthouse. You know, it's well built for sure, but all the, the good building in the world won't help anything if it's not sunk down deep into the ground, into the foundation. And how many storms has this lighthouse weathered over many, many years, and yet it stands? And for you and I, don't we want a life that will be able to withstand the storms that come our way? And we may be um, rocked at times, so the building that, that is our life, it may sway sometimes, it may creak, but if we have a foundation in God, we will not fall. And so that's what we're going to talk about this morning. How can we uh, build a life that is strong? How can we withstand the, the storms that will inevitably come our way? In the previous verses here of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus has warned us about leaving the narrow path. And you could leave the narrow path because of false teaching. We saw that last week. You could leave the narrow path also because of self-deception, where we would um, call Jesus our Lord, and yet in our lives we're not really making him Lord. It's a danger for us. And there's a danger for us here in this passage this morning that we would hear the words of Jesus but not act upon them. And that is a very, very costly mistake. And here Jesus is warning his followers. He's not, he's not separating between Christians and pagans who don't hear and don't care about the Word of God. He's talking to his disciples, to his followers. And there's a warning here to the followers of Jesus, to you and I this morning. And brethren... What we're doing here today, in hearing the words of Jesus, it's a matter of life and death. It really is. Do you believe that? Moments like these, where we're hearing the words of God, the words of Jesus, they will determine the course of your life. And that has nothing to do with me as the one who happens to be speaking. It's because it's the words of Jesus. It will have everything to do to determine your life and your eternal destination. And so will we hear the words of Jesus? And will we do the words of Jesus? Because our souls and our eternal future depend on this. And just as there are only two paths in life, the broad path or the narrow path, there are only two foundations in life upon which we can build our lives, the rock or the sand. And so let's talk about this morning first, how to build your life on the rock. Matthew 7, verse 24 Jesus said, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Who is the one that's building on this strong foundation? It's the one who, number one, hears the words of Jesus, and number two, acts upon the words of Jesus. If we will do that, we will be building our lives on a solid foundation. And notice that Jesus says here in 24, everyone who hears these words of mine, 
Uh, it's interesting that he doesn't say, you know, anyone who hears the words of the law or anyone who hears the words of God. He says, he who hears these words of mine, because Jesus is God in the flesh. He speaks the word of God. And so therefore, his words have the power of life and of death. Anyone who hears these words of mine, and Jesus is not shy, he's not hesitant to say something of that magnitude about himself. He knows who he is. He is God who took on human flesh. And he says, everyone, number one, who hears these words of mine. The word of God, the words of Jesus, they must be heard. There can be no doing without hearing. Isn't that right? And so I just want to encourage you, as we've done many times, we need to be hearing the word of God. We need to be teaching and proclaiming the word of God. We, we don't need to be a place that's about teaching the latest uh, trendy or, or cool or interesting thing that the world clamors after. What we need to offer ourselves and what we need to offer the world out there is bring them the word of God. Bring them the words of Jesus. We're not talking about ourselves. We're not talking about what's the latest and what's interesting. We're talking about the words of God and proclaiming them because hearing is the first step. But it doesn't stop there, does it? Everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them as indispensable, and it, hearing is completely indispensable. It is of utmost importance that we hear the word of God. But as important as it is, it's not hearing good teaching, it's not studying your Bible that are by themselves doing the will of God. It's not enough just to hear. It's not enough to say, oh, that was a nice lesson, oh, what a nice sermon, and then we leave these doors and just carry on about our lives like we always have. That's not doing the will of God. So we should not fool ourselves. We've got to be hearers and doers. And Jesus has given us many instructions already, hasn't he, in this Sermon on the Mount? Have we been hearing those words and acting upon them? Jesus has told us to be pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. Have you been practicing that? Have you been guarding your heart? Have you been striving for purity of life? Jesus has called us to be gentle, to be merciful, to be peacemakers. Have you been striving for that in your own life? Jesus has told us about the dangers of anger. And we all get angry. We all feel that emotion. But Jesus has warned us about you, you need to be very careful about the things that you say in anger. Now we can just hear that lesson and just go on and say, that was nice. I believe that. But have you put it into practice in your own life? He told us there when, when he's talking about anger back in chapter 5, he said, if you think that your brother has something against you, you need to go to him. You need to try to make it right. You need to try to reconcile with your brother. And it's of utmost importance. So important that he says, leave your worship there and go and be reconciled to your brother. Have you taken that to heart and have you tried to live it out in your own life? Jesus said in, in chapter 5, love your enemies. Hmm. That's a hard one. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. We need to not just hear that, but to put it into practice. Jesus said in chapter 6, I'm just picking out a few of these. There's so many we could talk about, not only in the Sermon on the Mount, but all through Scripture. Jesus said, do not 
Store up for yourselves treasures on earth. Don't make that your focus in life. We talked about the danger of of riches. You can't serve God and wealth. It's impossible. So have we taken that message to heart? Are we trying to live that message? As we hear these words of Jesus and put them into practice, and yes, we put them into practice imperfectly, don't we? But we're really sincerely striving to, to live these words out. We are building our lives on a foundation We're building our our lives on something so that we can never be shaken, no matter what storms come. And so Jesus talks to us here about the, the blessings of building on the rock. Look again at verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. This is wisdom. You want to be a wise person? You've got to put the words of Jesus into action and build your house upon the rock. This is what makes you stable. This is what gives you strength for your life. You're anchoring yourself in this way to someone immovable, our almighty God, our rock, our foundation, and he will never fail. And when the storms of life come, Look at verse 25. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the wind slammed against that house. And yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock. When the storms of life come, and brethren, the storms are inevitable. The storms of life will come, and they will just slam against us sometimes, and they will just rock our worlds And yes, as I said, the building, your life, the building, it might might sway a little bit, but it's not going to fall if we're built upon the rock of Jesus and his word. It's not going to fall. Jesus here, notice, he's uh, he's not exempting us from the storms of life. He's not saying that if we'll do this that we won't face the storms of life, but he's saying that he'll be a protection for us through those storms. It's not protection from the storms, but protection through the storms of life. That Jesus will be with us. So what would it mean to you in your life to have a real sense of stability, of perseverance, the ability to be patient through these storms, the ability to find, to find strength, to find joy, to find peace, even when everything around you is just blowing like mad. What would that mean to you? Do you know how you can find that? You hear the words of Jesus, and you do the words of Jesus, and you will not fall. Listen to that promise from God. The winds blew, the storm came, the rains fell, and Jesus said that house did not fall. It will not fall. What confidence we can have. Because, not, not because of our own strength, not because we're conjuring up something from within ourselves, but because we're drawing off the strength of God. And yet there's another alternative in life. There is building upon the sand. Look at verse 26. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Who is the foolish man? They're building their house on the sand. What if you went out to Lake Michigan and you saw someone building a multi-million dollar home on the sand? What would you think about that person? There's no foundation. That is a fool. That, that building is going to come down. The lake is going to reclaim that building. And that's how it is with us in our personal lives. We can build on the sand, and the, the sand is shifting. There's nothing stable about it. And, and our, our lives can collapse. Why? Because we've been hearing the words of Jesus, but we haven't been acting upon the words of Jesus. 
notice that both cases, they're hearing the same word, the same powerful words of God. And yet, because one has failed to act upon it, there's no strength, there's no stability. There's nothing to cling to in the times of storm. It's foolishness. The house will fall. There's no doubt about it. The house will fall. And so building our lives on the sand is very, very dangerous. Let's look at those dangers. Verse 26 Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and it fell and great was its fall. Again, the storms are inevitable. They are going to come. Are you preparing for the storms? Because if we're not preparing, the house will fall. Your life will collapse. And you can see it in those even who make a claim to Jesus. They love the Lord. They're Christians. They're following the Lord. But they're not doing the word of the Lord. They're not even striving to do the word of the Lord. And so financial troubles hit. Here comes this storm. This flood of water comes rushing in. Sickness comes. Persecution comes. Troubles with your family come. And we have no answers. We feel like there's no help. There's no stability. There's no peace. Everything comes crashing down. Why is that? Why is it a recipe for guaranteed disaster? And by the way, it may not happen right away. And sometimes you look at people who are living a sinful life and life seems to be going great for them. But one day it will crash. And the ultimate day that it will come falling down is on that day of judgment when they stand before God. And it may very well crash in this life. But there is coming a day of reckoning, a day of judgment, a day of guaranteed disaster. And so you and I need to heed the warning. Are you building your life on the rock? Or are you building your life on the sand? There's a great danger for us that we would come, that we would hear the word of God proclaimed, and we would walk out and forget it. Back to our old ways of doing things, back to our old ways of thinking, back to our old attitudes. And in that case, listen to this, the word of God will not profit us one bit. It has zero benefit if we're not acting upon it. I'm reminded of Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, talking about the children of Israel there, but the warning uh, is for us. The Hebrews author says, Therefore let us fear, if while a promise remains of entering his rest, any one of you may have come short of it. For indeed, we have had good news preached to us, just as they also, but listen, but the word they heard did not profit them, because it was not united by faith in those who heard. There was no faith, there was only hearing, and that's the essence of what faith is. Faith hears the word of God and then responds to it. If we're not responding to it, if we're not keeping it, then that's not faith. And so the words of God will profit us nothing. Zero profit because there's no faith. And so I, I want to ask you a question. Why do people hear the word of God? Why do they hear and, and not act on that word? Why do we do that sometimes? Well, I think one clear thing is the love of sin. You know, sin can be very uh, enticing. It can be very attractive. It can very easily pull us away from the love of God. And that's because it's deceitful. 
it promises us things. It promises us happiness in the short term. And so we can get short-sighted and we could go after sin, chasing those short-term uh, temporary passing pleasures of sin. And so we don't act upon the Word of God. I think sometimes why people don't act upon the Word is because they have a feeling that it's, it's impractical. You know, it, it's nice in theory, you know, all of these nice things that are said. It's, it's great in theory, but that's not going to work in the real world. It's not, it's not built for this fast-paced world that we live in. So I have to cast it aside. Sometimes people don't act upon the Word of God because it's, it's hard. It is a narrow path. It is difficult at times to act upon it, like praying for your enemies and doing good to them. That's hard, loving them. And so we turn away from it. And I think another reason that people don't act upon the Word of God is because they, they've heard the Word before and they didn't act on the Word before and nothing happened. Everything seems good, but we need to be careful not to be deceived and not to tell ourselves that the day of reckoning is not coming, because it will. It always will. And sometimes, sometimes we think that hearing alone will be good enough. You know, that's interesting. I mean, the Word of God is powerful, isn't it? We've preached that from this pulpit. The Word of God is, is living and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's powerful. And so maybe, maybe just hearing the Word of God would be enough. Maybe, maybe it will provide some benefit for me. But as we've seen, you can hear it, and there will still be this colossal crash coming in your life. Why is that? Why is it that hearing without doing is completely and utterly useless? Why is there no value in simply hearing? I pondered this a lot this week, thinking about this question. And I think it comes down to this. Who is it that gives stability in the times of storms? Who is it that gives peace in the time of a storm? Who is it that gives strength and the inner desire to not give up and to not quit and to persevere through this storm? Who gives all of those things? It's God, isn't it? God has to give those things. Those are spiritual blessings that only come from God. And sometimes I think that that we look at it like I'm hearing the Word of God and I'm going to gin these things up within myself. I'm going to pull myself up by my own bootstraps. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to figure this out. Not realizing that it's only from God that we have peace and stability and joy and all of these blessings in the midst of trial. Now you think about that and you think about someone who is just sitting and hearing the Word of God, maybe even enjoying it, but they're not doing it. What will God do with that person when they're displaying such a lack of faith in Him? When they're just turning their back on Him? Maybe they'll give it lip service, but they're turning their back on God. Now, is God going to reach into their life and provide this peace and stability and strength and all of these things in the storm? It comes from God, and God gives it to whom He wishes. And who does God give these things to? the one who hears and the one who acts on his word. So in conclusion, really think about this. What are you building your life upon? Have you been hearing the word but not doing the word? And if you would tell God today that you want to start acting upon His Word, that you've, you've made mistakes, you've, you've been foolish, as we sometimes are, but tell God, go to Him in prayer, even where you sit, and tell Him, I, I want to start acting upon your Word. I want to start living it. I'm convinced that God 
when he sees that attitude in us and that resolve to change, to repent, God will turn his eyes toward us, and he will bless us, and he will accept us again. He will give us that ability to be strong and to not fall in the storms. It's never too late to make that decision, to be a hearer of the Word of God and to act upon His Word. If you need prayers this morning, we'd be happy to pray with you. If you need to put on Christ in baptism for the forgiveness of your sins, having believed in Jesus, and put your trust in Him, would you come to Him to have your sins washed away? If there's anything we can do to help you, feel free to let us know at any time. Let's stand together and let's sing.